It's nice to be doing this again. My name is Claire Martin. I'm the Green Party candidate in North Vancouver, giving the opportunity again to answer a ton of your questions, really in-depth questions about policy and where we're going. So let's start with the first question. Elizabeth May has said that other parties are appearing to bribe us with our own money, appealing to small self-centered interests. What do you think Canadians are really looking for in this election? You know, when Elizabeth talks about being bribed with our own money, a lot of that uh, refers to some of these boutique tax credits that are being offered. And the issue with those are, with, with the other parties anyway, are essentially offering money to niche portions of the population as opposed to funding the program they're serving. I, I'm trying to think of one in particular, usually they're arts and sports tax credits. What we would do is we would remove many of those boutique tax credits and fund the, pro the programs themselves, which then makes the programs more widely accessible to every Canadian as opposed to those that want to pay for them. What does leaving Elizabeth May out of the Globe and Mail debate show about the fairness of our elect election system and our mainstream media? That's a really good question. Um, Funnily enough, on the doorsteps, the number one question I'm being asked is about the debates. When is the next debate? Who's in it? And there is outrage, funnily enough, from everybody. Whatever political stripe you may be bearing, everybody's quite outraged that Elizabeth isn't in the debates because she's such a good debater. And that is the whole point of democracy. This debate that's coming up in a couple of de uh, days, um, we're actually going to take part online. Twitter has offered to help us out, the Green Party, by basically allowing and having her live tweet and video tweet her own answers to the questions as they're being asked. So it's taking a little bit of technology, but we, in essence, will be able to take part in the debate online. So no matter what, try and watch the debate and then also follow at Canadian Greens at Elizabeth May. And if you want to get engaged, and I'd love to hear more from you, use the hashtag Globe Debates. What are some of the major issues facing North Vancouverites and what plan have you to fix these? Major issues, transport, 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 transport. I think everybody recently became very aware of the fact that we have two bridges. I mean, just two bridges essentially and a sea bus serving us. It's just not working. So the Green Party has, had, has put in place what we're calling the Council of Canadian Governments. And that is a sitting room, a committee made of all portions of Canadian governments, the uh, federals, the provincials, the municipals, First Nations and Métis and Inuit. We sit down and we come up with an infrastructure plan. To put hard money in place, we are actually pulling away 1% of the GST. We're not going to change the GST rate, but 1% of the GST, which currently stands at about 6.4 billion, will be dedicated purely to infrastructure across Canada. And of course, in North Vancouver, transport, transport, transport. Let's really fix our transport issues. Can you tell us about your party's green budget proposal and how people can get a copy? The green budget proposal? I brought a couple of copies here just for you. Um, this was brought public or made for, uh, brought to the public about a week ago if you actually go to my website uh, vote for Claire the number four so vote for Claire .ca, about halfway down the page I've got a link to this this is not only our platform but there's a fully costed out budget now in the paper copy we've got a summary budget but if you look at the online version and actually click on the little question marks it opens up and tells you exactly how we've budgeted out various portions of our platform, where the money's coming from, and it even projects where we will end up in five years' time. We are tabling this with a balanced budget, but we do actually project a small surplus as we go ahead. What are the four themes of this platform? I knew you were going to answer me that, and I want to get them right. So the four themes of our platform, and we've actually split the booklet into the four themes to, give it, to keep it nice and cohesive. Number one, sustainable economy. A lot of people don't realize that the Green Party, full national political party, isn't just about the environment. It is the backbone of what we are, but a sustainable economy benefits all Canadians. So that's number one per platform. Uh, strong communities. We wholeheartedly believe that an MP should not only be a voice in Ottawa, but should completely represent the riding they're in. In fact, quite frankly, that is the only job description for a member of parliament as per the constitution. So strong communities is number two. Number three, good government. This may come as a surprise to you, but every Green MP 
is not whipped. But in order for us to maintain a level of decorum, Elizabeth May actually has us sign a document that says we won't heckle in Parliament. We will actually raise the bar for uh, democratic debate. So good government, because it's time to restore democracy in Canada, is number three. And number four, obviously the reason, or most of the reason that I'm here, bold action on climate change. We absolutely have to address climate change, and it's one of the first things we'll do when government gets back on October 20th. What are some of the tax changes the Greens would like to see brought in to help finance their proposal? Tax changes, that's another good question. It's kind of an in-depth one. I'm going I'm to take this into two parts. Uh, we'll deal with big corporations and then we're going to deal with small businesses. Big corporations have actually been getting away with a pretty reduced corporate tax rate for many years. This was part of the Harper Conservative plan to stimulate the economy post the 2008 uh, recession, which we now like to call his first recession. Um, it didn't happen. Reducing corporate tax rate actually encouraged large corporations to hoard money. We are going to bring back the corporate tax rate to 2009 levels. We're going to do it incrementally, so it's not going to be a massive leap for big corporations. We need them to stay economically viable. We're going to increase it just under a percent per year until 2020, when it will actually then hit 19 percent, still the lowest of the OECD countries that we compare ourselves to. And then the second part is to do with small businesses. Small businesses, and this actually came as a surprise to me, I've been doing my homework, uh, on, in the private sector, small businesses account for 70% of the employment of Canadians. So small businesses drive, essentially, the Canadian economy. We are going to keep the small business rate capped as is, and we're not going to touch it. We actually think small businesses need to be applauded for what they bring to Canada, and they need to be helped as well. Can you describe some of the points in the costed uh, green budget proposal which are very interesting? Well, some of the more interesting ones, the ones that are raising people's awareness, quite frankly, very quickly, are obviously our stance on legalizing, regulating and taxing marijuana. We took a look at what's been going on in the States and actually, quite frankly, this is one of those issues that I w I'm not going to say it's a green issue. I would say this is a societal issue that the Green Party needs a stance on. The Green Party has decided that prohibition, basically, is not working. So we do want to legalize it, regulate it, and tax it. We're actually going to use very similar laws to what you're seeing with tobacco and tax it at around the 20% rate, 21% I think, um, thereby removing it from being on the black market. And the revenues that are projected, we, we've been very conservative because quite frankly at the moment it is a black market and it's very hard to project forward the kind of numbers. But we went to some economists who said that you could probably project around a two billion um, mark in the first year or so, and then from then on see growth to about five billion a year. By the way, in Washington state, they've decided to tax it not only at source where it's grown, but also at the retail end at 37 percent. So they are seeing massive growths from what essentially was uh, an invisible product prior. The second most important issue to Canadians, especially the elderly, is health. Yes. What proposals are in the Green Budget regarding health? Proposals in the Green Budget for health, especially seniors' health. You know, we, we are a population that is aging, and this is a policy that is becoming more and more of an issue for more and more families as our parents age, as we age ourselves. We have put together a national seniors strategy that actually includes everything from housing all the way through to healthcare. We looked at some areas across Canada where um, healthcare has been uh, taken particularly well, and the subject has been dealt with particularly well, and we've expanded on those ideas. One of them I want to bring up is um, used in Ontario. It's called an aging in place. Uh, form of healthcare, where rather than taking elderly people and putting them into a hospital, usually against their own will, we allow them to age at home, but we then give the caregivers help. We like that idea. I think most people prefer to age at home. They feel more comfortable, more secure. So we've taken those kind of projects that are already working in Canada and expanded them. We also have a dementia strategy because that's something that's becoming almost prolific, if I want to use that word, amongst our seniors. We've also brought in a pharmacare uh, plan which will allow essential medications 
to be far more accessible to people with much lower inco incomes. And quite frankly, the, the crux of our plan deals with income and we've set up a guaranteed livable income below which no Canadian seniors and, and youth can fall. And that means that we can guarantee that they can have access to drugs at a reduced cost that doesn't eat into their own uh, income. Elizabeth May states the other parties remind her of a cheap carny with tricks, <laughs> cunning and sleight of hand. What would the Greens like to restore to Parliament? Decorum. Absolutely decorum. I, I, you know, you watch the House sometimes and you can hear the heckling and jeers and yelling and bickering and hyper-partisan and it doesn't serve Canadians. And I get that we do have to debate issues, but we can debate issues with decorum. Um, Elizabeth's belief is that Green MPs, and I agree, and all of us agree, Green MPs want to be collaborative and aid Parliament to move bills forward in time, as opposed to being this ridiculous, hyper-partisan, bickering voice that really serves no purpose whatsoever. What is the Council of Canadian Governments proposed by the Green Party, and would it make the federal government more efficient and more tuned into the needs of its constituents? The Council of Canadian Governments is an idea that actually is currently at work in Australia, um, obviously called the Council of Australian Governments out there, where all levels of uh, government, all levels from the top, the federals, all the way down to the municipal level, come together to deal with issues on a holistic level. And it appears to be working. We generally, across Canada, have the same issues. Transport, homes, housing, seniors, veterans. It really helps to talk that all together and come out with a, a direction and a leadership idea which can then filter down. It also means nobody's ever left out of the discussion. Mr Harper says that he talks to provinces individually, but that means that we cobble together plans across provinces where we could deal with it, as I said, on a holistic level. So this is a, a new idea that is working in other countries and we really think would work well here. What most alarms you about the direction of the Conservatives have taken Canada in regards to the environment, Muslim scientists and bureaucrats? I think what I find most alarming is the contempt for Parliament and the contempt for those who are by definition non-partisan. So I'm talking obviously about scientists, the fact that there is no national science advisor, the fact that the Environmental Assessment Act has basically gone by the wayside. Scientists do nothing more than bring data. They actually don't bring it with an editorial comment. They bring data. And to not have data in debate is appalling. Um, so it's the contempt that I find most infuriate, infuriating. What are your concerns regarding some of the trade deals Canada has entered into, especially FIFA? Boy, trade deals. How much time do we have? Trade deals are the ultimate misnomer. They are often not about trade. They are often about sovereignty, uh, especially what's called investor state trade deals. Uh, this is where we sign a contract with another country that actually supersedes our sovereign rights to look after a country. Um, there's so many, it's almost too hard, too difficult to where to start, but starting with something like the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, where essentially countries like China, which is a communist dictatorship, can supersede our sovereign rights to, to define whether or not a public company can actually exist. And I'm using this as an example because we have companies like Canada Post that serve us as a citizen rather than a consumer. And that means that somebody in Fort McMurray has as much right to receive mail daily as somebody in North Vancouver. Uh, under the TPP, China says this puts them at an unfair disadvantage, that they can't compete, and that, that they believe that Canada Post, the CBC, should be privatized. So we are very much against these um, unfair trade agreements, and we will do everything to not sign any more. What is your position on electoral reform and our present system of first-past post? Electoral reform comes up a lot. A lot of uh, students know about this because they get it now uh, taught to them. Electoral reform is one of the promises that Elizabeth May has made to deal with as soon as we get back to Parliament. Right now, a wide, uh, a huge amount of Canadians don't have a voice in Parliament because of the way we actually elect our MPs. It's called first past the post and essentially the person that wins the most votes 
first gets the position of the MP. All the other votes are discounted. And if we go back to our current house, which has a 308 seats as opposed to the new one that will have more, um, the Green Party has two seats. We actually had more than half a million people vote for us. And if you did something like proportional representation, proportionally in the House with 308 seats, we would should have about 12 seats. We would like to bring back proportional representation or bring proportional representation uh, as dem democratic reform to Canada. And I think most Canadians, quite frankly, would agree. What happened to the regulation that all votes received by a party were given about $22 per vote, allowing <laughs> smaller parties with a sizable vote to build their parties financially? That's a, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, just recently, um, we were given, or every political party was assigned $2 finances uh, for votes, which obviously allowed political parties to have a financial um, standpoint to go forward in the future. And it also allowed smaller parties to have a little bit of a war chest as we went forward in time. And again, it helps the democracy when you were talking about new elections. Uh, the Harper government has whittled that money down till last April when it got cancelled. So now no money is assigned to votes and it means that the smaller parties, obviously parties like the Green Party, struggle financially. Would you like to see a review of how our senators are appointed and what safeguards are placed on spending in the Senate and the legislature? How could this be done? Boy, Senate reform, that's a really huge issue. I've actually had that on the doorstep quite a few times. Uh, let me be quite clear here because other parties are saying that they would abolish the Senate. We cannot abolish the Senate without opening up the Constitution, which requires complete agreement from all provinces and territories, which is going to be massively uh, difficult to do. So we have to reform the Senate, and that's something that we want to do as soon as we do get into power. Uh, I truly do believe there is a place for an academic educated Senate, but I don't believe that they should wield the kind of power they do, nor the abuse of power that we've seen of late. Um, the Senate recently has actually managed to um, shut down bills that the House has passed. One of them was the Climate Accountability Act. So we, we don't believe that the Senate should be able to do something like that, but they should be able to voice concern. They are after a sober second thought. So if we need that, great, but I don't think they should be able to turn down bills that the House has passed. In regards to the scientifically and historically proven danger fish farms present to the continued existence of wild salmon on this coast, and the federal government's granting of even more and larger fish farms in Clackwood Sound and the Broughton, what changes would you like to see in regards to the federally approved proliferation of these farms? In a nutshell, uh, I'd like to see an end to them. Uh, in 2012, the Cohen Commission already stated and laid out quite clearly the dangers of fish farming on so many levels, but dealing with the salmon especially. Uh, farming is incredibly dangerous to our wild sockeye. Um, we are seeing diseases being brought in with the eggs that are not uh, natural to our environment and therefore prolific uh, danger to what we do have currently. We're actually seeing massive upswings and downswings in our salmon uh, stocks, which in itself is not only mysterious but is quite dangerous. You know that something's going on there. So we would like to see uh, the advisory or the advice coming from the Cohen Commission brought in, which is essentially a moratorium, no more fish farms, and quite frankly we would like to see an end to fish farming in the next 10 years. What are your feelings and the policy of the Greens regarding the Syrian refugee crisis and how has it been handled by the Conservatives? Oh <laughs> boy, uh, you know what, I was with a bunch of uh, church leaders and community elders just two nights ago just when the Syrian issue had come up and all of us said it is it's I mean it's a difficult situation but is the sheer lack of humanity that is being voiced by our leader that I find most insulting this is not a refugee issue. This is not a migrant issue. This is a people issue. If the video that we're seeing right now coming out of that area had been shot in black and white, it would harken back to two wars, two official great wars. Enough. I just, I'm horrified. We let in close to 60,000 people, uh, the Vietnamese boat people, 
a few decades ago. We are a country built on migrants. It is our responsibility, our duty, and it is what makes us Canadian to open our doors and say we can help these people. And to not see that coming, that direction, that leadership from my government is, it's appalling. Yeah, right. I can't use any other words to that. What are your feelings regarding uh, HARP, the federal government's treatment of veterans? Veterans, veterans, boy. You know, here's something I don't think a lot of people know. When you sign to serve your country, you sign a contract of what is called unlimited liability. And the meaning is that the government can and probably will send you to areas that are very dangerous to serve your country. In return, when you come back, if you've been hurt, the Canadian government says, in return for that unlimited liability, we will look after you. That, that's what the contract is. Currently, I don't believe that the Canadian government is living up to its end of the contract. People are coming back with physical and emotional and mental disabilities and are being treated, quite frankly, like second-class citizens. We have taken a, an offering of a lifetime pension to a lump sum payment for some people that have come back that often, often need a lifetime pension. We have closed, we, the Harper government has closed in excess of 200 veteran affairs offices. I mean, the insults are, are just right across the board. Canada needs to serve our veterans in a far more effective and caring manner. We need to treat them with the kind of dignity that they deserve after uh, standing up for the, our country. We will reopen those veteran affairs offices. We will make it so that claiming for pensions and disability allowances are much easier than they are right now. And we will treat our veterans with the grace and dignity that they actually do deserve. What can you offer to North Vancouverites that Andrew Saxton has failed to do? Or why do you feel you would be a better representative for North Vancouver in Parliament? You know, it's a, it's a, that's a very personal question. Here's what I don't feel is happening right now. I don't feel like I have a voice. I don't feel that my MP represents me, a Va North Vancouverite. That will be the difference, and that's the pledge that Elizabeth May expects from all her Green MPs. We do serve the Green Party, we live by the Green Party standards, and we all love the platform. But our number one job as a Member of Parliament is to serve our riding, is to serve the people of North Vancouver and make them feel like they have access to their MP and they have a voice in Ottawa and not the other way around. So that, I think, is the difference I will bring. What are your feelings regarding an inquiry into the missing women? I think it is imperative that we find out what is going on here. Somebody said to me the other day, if 300 women had gone missing, indigenous, indigenous and First Nations women had gone missing in Ottawa, boy, there'd be an inquiry going on pretty hard and fast. The fact that it's on the West Coast is immaterial, or in the prairies, or in the territories. It's immaterial where we have to find out what's happening. We have to know that there are not second-class citizens in this country, and we have to do something about it. What is your last message to the voters in this Friday? <laughs> I'm going to use the phrase that I use for all of my videos, and it is completely from the heart. Do me the honour of being an informed voter. Go out and understand what all the parties are saying they're going to do. Understand what you feel aligns best with your core values. Vote. Promise me, even the C-Bus will. Promise me you'll go out and vote, and I know you'll vote Green.